In this video, we'll learn how to use nested loops in P5.js. Nested loops are great for making patterns and working with pixel grids. In my demo code, I've got two for loops. The first draws a horizontal row of ellipses at the top of the canvas. The second draws a vertical column on the left. Even though these two loops produce different results, they're almost identical. Each one starts out with a local variable, initialized at 25. Each exit condition repeats the loop up to the canvas width or height. And we're incrementing by 25 each time the loop repeats. Our first loop's variable x is plugged into the horizontal coordinate of our ellipse function. So the first ellipse's horizontal coordinate is 25, then 50, then 75, and so on. The second loop's variable y sets the vertical component of our ellipse's center point, and that's why we get this vertical column. My goal here is to make a grid of these ellipse shapes completely covering the canvas. And a logical first step towards doing that is to just duplicate the second loop that's making our vertical column. If we take that static number controlling the horizontal dimension of each of the ellipses and change it to 50, you see I get another column. So I can just keep pasting and setting each column 25 pixels apart from its neighbor. Now, I made a handful of columns here, and I can already start to see just how similar these blocks of code are. And remember, that's a clue that we can simplify what's going on here by using another loop. To figure out how, let's look for patterns in this code. So all the ellipses in that first column are located at 25 horizontally. The next column is at 50, the next is at 75, and so on. So we're increasing the horizontal component by 25 in each one of these columns. Now that's a clue to me that there's a way I could combine my original first and second loops to make a grid for me and get rid of all this almost completely identical duplicate code. So let's delete those extra columns. And what I'm gonna do here is cut that second for loop and actually paste it inside my first for loop. So we're nesting our for loops together. Now I can see visually all that's done so far is get rid of that initial horizontal row. And that makes sense if I think about it because we're drawing all of our ellipses set at 25 pixels in the X dimension. And that number isn't changing. But remember, that counter variable x from our outer loop is counting up by 25. So my idea is to use that x variable to set the horizontal location of my ellipses. Now I can see I've got an entire grid. So here, we're telling P5 to start at the top left, then working towards the right with each repetition of the outer loop, use the inner loop to make one column from top to bottom. We can see dynamically how this operates if we replace our width constraint in the outer loop's exit condition with mouse x. Now we get essentially a row made up of columns, starting on the left-hand side and working right to wherever the mouse happens to be horizontally. We could do the same thing with our height constraint in the inner loop. Let's swap that out with mouse y. And now we get a row of columns going left to right horizontally and each one of our columns starts at the top and works down to wherever the mouse happens to be vertically. Now let's switch back to our original exit conditions and test some other variations. For example, we can adjust how we update either of our counter variables. So right now we're just adding 25 to both, so they're increasing in a linear fashion. Instead of adding, we could multiply. So I'll switch this inner loops update to y times equals 1.1. And that's the same as saying y equals y times 1.1. So this gives us a slightly exponential increase in the vertical spacing of each of our rows. Now I'll go ahead and switch back to y plus equals 25. And we could also look at changing the exit condition constraint of our inner loop. So let's switch that to test for whether y is less than or equal to x. And this gives us a triangular shaped grid. Now this makes sense if we think it through. So we're starting in that top left corner. On the first outer loop, both x and y will be set to 25. So 25 is less than or equal to 25. 
which would let our inner loop run and draw that single ellipse. The next iteration of our inner loop, y will be 50, which will no longer be less than or equal to 25. The inner loop exits, and we're on to the next repeat of the outer loop where x is 50. y would start again at 25. 25 is less than or equal to 50, so we get our first ellipse in the second column. The inner loop loops again, and now both x and y are equal to 50. 50 is less than or equal to 50, so we get our second ellipse, and so on. So those are just a couple of the options that we can tap into by using nested loops in P5JS.